שלום everyone and thank you for joining our webinar on the GFI Research Grant Program. This webinar will be recorded and uploaded to our YouTube channel, so you are welcome to view it or share it afterwards. Uh, I want to introduce to you Kyle Sossi, the new uh, GFI Research Grant Program Manager. Uh, Kyle comes to G5 from the ARM Institute, where he has uh, been the Education and Workforce Development Project Manager. Uh, for those of you who know uh, G5, you probably know uh, Dr. Erin uh, Rees Clayton, our Senior uh, Associate Director of Science and Technology, who oversees our research uh, funding efforts. Prior to joining uh, G5, Erin was a research faculty member at the University of Michigan School of, uh, of Public Health. Uh, Kai and Erin, thank you so much for uh, joining us, and uh, the floor is yours. Thank you so much, Tom. Um, yeah, super excited to be here. Thanks for extending the opportunity uh, for the, the GFI US team to share more uh, about our research grant program and, and what our plans are for 2022. Um, as we get started here, um, a few things that we're gonna cover today. Uh, so first, we're gonna talk about um, what are GFI's research funding goals? You know, Why does this funding opportunity exist? What does it aim to do? Um, and then we're gonna spend a lot of the time walking through our 2022 request for proposals, um, hoping that we'll leave ample time for questions from all of you. Um, so first question, what are GFI's research funding goals? So since 2018, um, GFI has been holding yearly project calls, um, requests for proposals, with the really uh, uh, laser focus of growing and creating excitement for um, and increasing the visibility of the global scientific network of all protein researchers. Um, we're focused on funding programs that are uh, addressing the organoleptic or sensory properties of alternative proteins, the uh, cost, um, and also the scale up, uh, with real focus on uh, open access research, uh, really intending uh, this funding to be something that uh, works to the benefit of all stakeholders in the alternative protein space. Um, and so, uh, you know, I've been with GFI now for about two months or so. Um, probably every day of that two months have woken up uh, to some news announcement um, of commercial interest in the space or new funding coming from a venture firm um, benefiting a startup. So with this kind of booming interest from the commercial sector um, in the alternative protein ecosystem, why does GFI fund uh, alternative protein research? Um, well, really the driver of this research is to focus on um, that uh, bedrock and foundation of open access R&D uh, that's really going to help the scale up um, of this industry and allow alternative proteins to become a viable part of the global food system. Um, so we're looking at accelerating the science of alternative proteins broadly um, with identifying with the, with the intent of identifying critical white spaces. So these are areas that maybe the commercial sector is overlooked or areas of underfunding um, that GFI as an honest broker can really identify um, and then direct resources towards. Um, again, with the focus of solving a wide range of technical issues across the entire alternative protein industry. So in terms of this program and the success to date, uh, since 2018, we've awarded $13 million uh, in project funding across 82 research projects uh, in 17 different countries. And all of this work, it should be noted, is powered by um, a very small number of generous donors who provide financial support to allow GFI uh, to run uh, a yearly grants program. And Israel specifically has had a lot of uh, success um, bidding on GFI funded research. So to date, um, Israel's received funding for nine total projects um, with research topics ranging from, uh, you know, using quinoa as a raw material for uh, plant-based meat products to using uh, fermentation to create a flavor base from legumes and grains uh, that are organoptically or sensorily uh, satisfying to consumers. And if past results are any indication, we're expecting a lot more proposals from Israel this year and really looking forward to reading um, all of your ideas. So one thing before we talk about the 2022 RFP that I wanted to mention, um, and this is really a priority of the, the grants program that I haven't talked about yet, um, is that we want it to be a, sort of a stepping stone for researchers that are interested in exploring uh, the alternative protein industry, but maybe haven't had that breakthrough yet. 
Um, so this comes from Professor David Block at UC Davis. He said, GFI's grant enabled my lab to great, break ground um, in cultivated meat research and formulate a plan uh, that addresses critical industry challenges. Uh, this resulted in million do millions of dollars of additional funding directed towards uh, interdisciplinary research and training at UC Davis. I mean, that really encapsulates it and is a great example of a researcher who used GFI funding uh, to open up a new line of inquiry into alternative proteins, um, in this case, cultivated meat research. Um, and then that uh, uh, kind of stepping stone opened up um, and paid dividends to his lab and university um, in pursuing additional funding downstream. So uh, now let's walk through the 2022 request for proposals. Uh, this is going to be our only RFP for the year. Um, so if you're expecting or planning to bid on a GFI funded project for this calendar year, really focus in on this 2022 RFP because your next opportunity is going to be in early 2023. Uh, so through this RFP, we're looking to award approximately $3.9 million in new funding um, across two different mechanisms. I'll talk about them in more detail on the next slide, um, but these are our field catalyst grants and our discovery grants. Uh, for both of these categories, it's a two-phase application process, um, with phase one applications being due on uh, June 3rd, um, and then there will be a review period with invitations to submit a phase two application. It should be noted that receiving the notification uh, that you're moving on to phase two is not a guarantee of funding, um, but again, phase one applications, uh, uh, make sure you get those in by June 3rd. There are two funding categories. There's first uh, field catalyst grants. Um, so field catalysts um, are providing funding for up to uh, $250,000 for a targeted project lasting between 18 and 24 months. Um, in addition to that $250,000 cap, an applicant may request an additional $100,000, so bringing that cap up to 350K um, by partnering with researchers uh, or industry stakeholders who have not received GFI funding in the past, um, or by partnering with another organization um, that you know they maybe have not done work with in the past, and so a novel partnership that this GFI funding is being used to support. Really looking at this as a way to bring new researchers into the field, um, help uh, universities or research partners uh, open up new collaborations that um, they haven't done in the past, and so using GFI funding as an avenue to do so. Uh, with the do a higher dollar amount uh, comes a more targeted uh, uh, topic areas. Um, so we have three key funding priorities for the field catalyst grants. Um, so one is creating uh, biological processing methods for creating functional plant-based ingredients. Funding priority B um, is focused on developing animal-free, non-recombinant uh, albumin and transferrin uh, for cultivated meat. Um, and then funding priority C is the creation of flavor components for alternative seafood. Um, so as you can see, um, uh, funding priority A is really focused on uh, you know, the plant-based meat market. Uh, funding priority B is really focused on the cultivated meat space. Um, and then C, though it's focused on alternative seafood, uh, can be made up of uh, plant-based meat cultivated or fermentation uh, uh, alternative protein platforms. So to talk about uh, these funding priorities in a little bit more detail, uh, funding priority A, the one focused on biological processing methods. Um, so this one's aimed at a distinct challenge um, in the current approach to uh, processing uh, protein isolates or protein ingredients. Um, so currently chemical and mechanical methods for processing crops, that crops into uh, flowers, isolates or concentrates uh, can have negative impacts on the structure or function uh, of the resulting ingredients. And in, in some cases, uh, the processes would require, you know, an energy intensive step or uh, additional investment um, in, in equipment um, or introduce undesirable chemicals uh, into the end product. So under funding priority A, uh, the RFP is looking at proposals that will develop and optimize uh, biological processing methods. So biological in comparison with, uh, you know, chemical or mechanical. Um, for processing uh, um, uh, 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 ingredients to be used in plant-based meat and or seafood. Uh, funding priority B, uh, the one focused on animal-free, non-recombinant uh, albumin and transferrin. Um, this one's aimed at the current challenge where cell culture media 
um, is making up the bulk of the costs uh, for cultivated meat production, um, with the greatest contributor to these costs being the recombinant proteins and growth factors uh, that are added to the cell culture media to assist the growth and differentiation um, and to substitute the function of animal serum. So, uh, um, uh, the you know bovine serum that's that's typically used uh, in in cell culture media. Uh, under funding priority B, the RFP is looking at, this RFP is looking at proposals that would develop uh, low cost functional substitutes for albumin and transferrin in animal cell culture, um, using methods that can be scaled to volume suitable for commercial cultivated meat production. So again, really focused on um, opening up a, a a a new ingredient that can help. Uh, the industry broadly um, in the scaling of cultivated meat. Um, I just want to mention too, um, before I talk about funding priority C, um, that all of these funding priorities are based on uh, GFI published white spaces, um, that there are one pagers in the RFP document describing in detail um, these funding priority areas. Um, those one pagers will have links out um, that talk a little bit more about the challenge of and, and thinking behind uh, the funding priority. And then very importantly, if you're looking at um, a bidding in one of these areas, they're gonna include the components of a successful proposal. Um, so you can really write your proposal to what GFI has called out um, as you know, the, the top four or five things that we're looking for um, in a response to one of these uh, uh, funding priorities. So uh, finally, funding priority C. Uh, this is focused on the creation of flavor components for alternative seafood. Um, so seafood products have a wide range of distinct flavor profiles um, with different uh, species of fish and shellfish varying substantially um, in flavor and aroma. Um, Plant-based fermentation derived and cultivated seafood products, um, if they're to be um, you know, uh, organeptically satisfying to the consumer, have to mimic the flavors of animal-based seafood. Uh, while avoiding off flavors or overpowering fishy tastes. Um, so typically, you know, what a consumer may associate with um, a piece of, of fish um, is, a, is a fishy taste, right? Um, but we don't want to introduce um, a, a flavor that's gonna be overpowering or um, create the perception that the, the uh, end product is off in some way. So under funding priority C, the RFP is looking for proposals that will improve our understanding of seafood flavor. Um, so looking at the uh, volatile molecules that make up um, the flavor experience and the sense experience, um, and then optimize ingredients to improve the flavor of plant-based fermentation derived and or cultivated seafood. So we talked about the field catalyst grants. So these are the ones that are um, you know, 250K uh, up to 350K with the partnership uh, additional funds. Um, that are lasting you know, 18 to 24 months. Uh, discovery grants are the other funding mechanism included in this RFP. So discovery grants are providing up to $100,000 in funding for targeted projects lasting approximately 12 months. Um, so they're smaller scale, um, quicker uh, uh, period of performance, um, but they're also very open uh, topic areas. So discovery grant proposals um, are encouraged, but, but certainly not required to focus on one of the research concept notes identified by GFI's uh, Advancing Solutions for Alternative Proteins Initiative. So instead of um, you know, having to respond to one of the three funding priorities under the field catalyst category, uh, the applicant has a lot of freedom in choosing what kind of approach and what kind of uh, research topic that they wanna focus on. Uh, so this can be a really great opportunity again for people that maybe haven't uh, dipped into the alternative protein space in the past and looking for that first kind of stepping stone in, um, or people that have a, a, a research interest that's different uh, than the funding priorities on offer uh, in the field catalyst category this year. So um, in terms of mechanics of how to apply, what we're looking for, things like that. Um, so if you'd like to apply uh, for this RFP, first step is to visit gfi.org uh, backslash research grants to find the RFP. Um, so you'll be able to download it from that page. Um, and then the second step is going to be to set up a user profile to begin your proposal um, on our new application portal at grants.gfi.org. Um, so in order to access the template for the proposal itself, you really have to set up a user profile um, on that grants.gfi.org page. 
it takes five minutes and then you'll be uh, starting your proposal. Um, you can edit it up to the application deadline, uh, make changes to it, anything like that. So don't, you know, don't hesitate to, to set up that user profile and get access to the template. And then final reminder to please submit your applications for phase one by June 3rd. Um, again, if you have any questions throughout the application process, please reach out to myself or Aaron at research um, underscore grants at gfi.org. So to give you a little bit of insight into the timeline for this, when we're expecting to make decisions, when you can kind of plan around your year. Um, so we announced the RFP on April 25th. This opened up uh, the phase one phase of the application window. Uh, so those applications are due again on June 3rd. Then we'll enter about four week period where we're making reviews of the applications and, and creating decisions um, for who we'll invite to phase two. Um, we're expecting those decision notices to be made on June 27th. That'll then open up the phase two application window uh, where people who are invited can edit their proposals, supply additional information, um, and then submit their final applications by August 1st. Um, from that August 1st deadline, we're expecting about a month to be able to review all of the applications that we receive um, and then make our decision notices um, and begin the contracting window. Uh, that'll open up a 120 day contracting window from that September 1st date um, with the, you know, uh, a schedule of that putting us at December 31st um, at, the, at the back end of that 120 day contracting window and looking to enforce um, that pretty, pretty stringently this time. So we want people to move quickly um, on getting under contract with GFI, starting their work um, before, the, before the new year. Um, a few things on evaluation criteria, and again, there's a lot more information in the RFP document than what's included on this slide, so really encourage you uh, as a next step to, to look at that. Um, we're looking at scientific alignment, so how well your um, project is responding to either the, the needs set out in the funding priority um, or the, um, the research note from the ASAP database that you're responding to. Um, the expected impact of your program, of your project. Um, so how well, you know, you're addressing um, or how well your product will improve uh, the sensory impact or, or the, the, uh, the cost or the scale up um, of an alternative protein um, or ingredient. Um, your contribution to the scientific community. So this is really like your, your uh, research results plan, uh, how, you, how you're anticipating on sharing uh, results from your, your program to the broader scientific community. Um, project planning, um, so how feasible um, is the uh, scope of work that you've set out in your proposal against the timeline that you have? Um, is it an appropriate budget request? Is this you know, a, a $5 million problem that you're only requesting 250K for? Um, and then finally, commercial relevance. So you know, does this, uh, uh, the results of this program, will they have a, a, a wide ranging benefit to a large cross section of stakeholders across the uh, alternative protein industry. And another reminder, again, I mentioned this before, but for field catalyst applications, please do look at the funding priority section of the RFP, because um, that's gonna give you a lot of specific guidance on what successful proposals will include. Um, so for each of those funding priority sections, uh, there's a bullet point list of you know, what, what specifically we're looking for and, and what a successful proposal will address. Um, a few things to mention that we don't fund. Uh, we do not fund uh, insect farming, um, uh, any, any research being done uh, with human subjects, um, uh, programs or projects that are looking for funding to conduct market research or consumer preference studies um, or life cycle analyses. Uh, um, in terms of who's eligible to apply, um, really wide range of, of potential uh, lead organizations or project participants. So any sector is able to uh, apply for funding, uh, academia, government, industry, not-for-profit from countries around the world. So again, from that slide before we've uh, received, um, uh, well, we've, we've given funding to projects in 17 different countries. I'm sure we've received proposals from many more countries uh, than we've been able to give funding to. Um, and so, you know, you're not limited by geography of applying to GFI uh, uh, grant. Um, a few things, and I think this is my last slide before opening up the floor for questions. 
Um, so this has been kind of a recurrent theme throughout the presentation. The goal of this program is to support open access research uh, that supports the alternative protein industry broadly. Um, a few things that are included in the GFI uh, sub, sub award to note uh, that kind of help aid in, in the support of open access research. Uh, things like joint ownership of IP with GFI. Obviously, this is just constrained to any IP that's developed during the, the course of the, the project. Um, open access publication of, of research results, so making sure that those research, research results um, are available, either hosted on the GFI webpage or some other open forum. Um, licensing of IP for academic use on a royalty-free basis, um, so if another academic uh, institution would like to take your, your research results um, and continue doing work on them that you would be uh, licensing uh, that IP to them on a royal, royalty-free basis. And then non-exclusive fair market licenses for commercial use. So if a private industry or, or um, commercial partner wanted to take your um, research results and transition them, uh, that you would not be give, granting that IP exclusively to that partner um, and allow others if they wanted to do uh, similar to, to also enter into an IP sharing agreement with you. Specific terms and kind of an outline of these again can be found in the FAQ document uh, that's linked to in the RFP. Um, and so though we're encouraging a lot of information sharing, we're not prohibiting uh, the generation of IP its, or its protection. Uh, so we really encourage uh, any applicants that develop uh, IP that they'd like to pursue a patent for to do so. Um, so pursuing patents for um, IP that you generated is encouraged. Um, and then we can also do things like delay the publication of research findings. Um, if it's interfering with, with uh, the approval of a patent, um, we're happy to do those things. Um, so uh, again, though, too, I, I, I just want to state that if the, these IP terms uh, are, are the only thing that's keeping you from applying, uh, please do reach out to Aaron or myself to talk about what would be acceptable to you. Um, we have uh, negotiated uh, these terms differently with, with uh, others in the past and depending on your project uh, uh, may choose to do the same. So don't let this limit um, uh, you in, in pursuing funding. So with that, um, uh, Tom, I'm not sure how you'd like to handle questions. I, I saw a couple things come through the chat. Um, I'm not sure if people can come off mute, but at this point, I'd be really happy to answer any questions you have about this RFP uh, that, that we currently have active. Um, and again, just was, you know, very excited to, to talk with all of you today and, and have this opportunity to, to share this information with the Israeli audience. Thanks so much, Kyle, for uh, this. Uh, your talk was so good that no one had questions uh, beside one. Um, something that Erin wants to, uh, that Erin uh, uh, mentioned, uh, that we want to, you to know is that uh, the focus of the grants are for meat replacements, meat alternatives, rather than eggs and uh, dairy. So this is a note uh, we highly recommend uh, thinking about, uh, so we won't waste your time. So if there are any other questions, you are welcome to uh, uh, contact uh, Kyle and Erin for, uh, uh, for uh, uh, questions regarding the grant. And if you need any kind of support regarding the grant, you are welcome to contact uh, me and Michal um, uh, regarding uh, any kind of thoughts or connections. Uh, Kyle, I will ask you if uh, someone wants connections, is there a platform you can, you can recommend uh, for this? Uh yeah, so they're welcome to reach out to um, to to the research grant program team. That'll go to Aaron and myself at at the research underscore grants at gfi.org. Uh, they can also reach out to me personally, um, uh, and I can help them with any questions that they have about the about the grant. If and I would say if anyone is looking specifically for collaborators, um, you're welcome to reach out to us with the type of expertise you're looking for and we'll do our best to try and help connect you with people. Um, but GFI also has several resources on our website. Um, we have a, a company database that lists several companies in the alternative protein space. We also have our collaborative researcher directory, which lists academic and, and government researchers interested in this space. Um, so those can be good resources to use as well if you're looking for um, potential research partners. 
Uh, Kyle, there is one question in the chat. Um, are academic institutions usually willing to agree to the IP terms? Uh, I would ask this, uh, I will move this to Ellen because she has a previous uh, a work with the grant. Yes, thanks. This is um, the toughest part of our negotiations. Um, we do get many universities that are willing to accept the terms. However, we do negotiate with many universities as well. Um, we have also heard concerns from universities that our IP um, terms are too strict. So we are currently reviewing those. I can't promise that any changes will be implemented um, in 2022, but um, you know, potentially by 2023, we, we will have um, different starting terms to try and make the negotiations easier. Um, we're also working with uh, one donor to our program who has very strict terms, um, which does limit our ability to negotiate some. So we recognize that this can be um, something that's, that's tricky for people um, to, to figure out. And uh, again, I think the easiest thing is to reach out to us so we can discuss your specific situation. We want to try and be as, as flexible as we can. Um, and if the, the ownership of IP it, you know, is the issue, um, there may be ways that by granting a you know, non-exclusive license with the ability to, to sub-license or, or something like that would, would be acceptable. Um, again, we're not wanting to make things more difficult for any of you, um, but we really do wanna make sure that um, should a situation arise um, where for whatever reason the, the university or researcher is unable to utilize the research or share that with others that the GFI would be able to help make that happen. Um, as Kyle mentioned, our, our biggest goal is, is really to try and make sure that the work we're doing gets shared as broadly as possible. Um, to advance the alternative protein industry as, as quickly as possible. Thanks for the detailed answer, Eri. There is another question uh, in the chat. Uh, for the next ones, please uh, ask the question using the Q&A button. Uh, in the downloadable application form, there are no spaces for budget allocation or grant uh, chart for the project. Will this be requested in the online form for phase one application? So it's a great question. Uh, uh, thanks, Tom, and, and thanks, uh, Andrea, for, for asking it. Um, so this is going to be a part of the phase two application. So for phase one, we're really just looking for um, the total budget amount that you're requesting, um, and then the primary objectives of the projects. You'll be asked to list the top you know, three or four primary objectives of what you're looking at doing. When we move into the phase two applications, we'll get a lot more detail about the budget allocation um, and then asking for you know, your statement of work and, and when you're planning on completing those objectives. But for phase one, um, we're really just looking at those, those more general figures of total budget and uh, um, primary objectives. Excellent. Another anonymous and Teddy asking a similar question to the one before, are uh, companies willing to agree to the IT terms? I guess that's for Erin for you as well. Bless you. Yeah, so um, I think, and, and again, I don't have background experience with uh, uh, executing prior contracts on awards. Um, but it's really going to depend, I think, on the type of IP that that company is generating through the project's goals. Um, so if, if you know, you're a company and, and you're anticipating that this project is going to create a new product stream uh, for you that you're looking at um, uh, you know, uh, marketing and commercializing and actually uh, building revenue off of, those IP sharing terms may be you know, non-negotiable for you and you don't want to enter into a sharing arrangement. Um, either for reasons of sharing that IP or the commitment to open uh, access research. Um, but if you're looking at more of a, a general question, um, something that you know, other partners um, are experiencing similar, um, or you're just you know, a, a small startup that's looking for um, uh, 
you know, you haven't really created a product prototype yet, and you're really just interested in getting into the space. Um, you know, we, we've had um, uh, those will be, uh, you know, slightly more amenable to you as a startup. So it really depends as a, as a private company or as a, as a commercial partner um, on the type of IP that that product is, is aiming to, to develop. Thank you. Uh, I will add to that. We had grants before uh, with uh, companies. Uh, some companies agreed to the grant uh, IP terms. Uh, uh, some declined. I would uh, mention that if the if you are a company that aims to uh, uh, go for the grant, don't do it on your core IP. Do it on a project that seems to you interesting and would be interesting to others, not just for you, because that will make it as uh, something that is uh, likely to happen. But for example, if we see the uh, non-recombinant protein uh, uh, replacement for uh, albumin transferring, if you will do it yourself, that means that uh, you will uh, have something that is optimized for your uh, process. However, others will be able to use it as well. So th these are my two cents on, the, on that. And uh, just to make sure everyone um, who's not looking at the chat, uh, here's Erin shared um, her perspective that for companies, uh, typically in the past, um, they haven't funded research that results in uh, IP. So for example, uh, characterizing the, the protein of a crop maybe that's being used um, in their end product, um, that characterization of the protein isn't um, necessarily IP, but um, is being used um, uh, they, they applied for GFI funding because it's underlying um, a part of their product. Wow, Erin, I hope you feel well. We really need you, especially in the next couple of months. Uh, so I think uh, uh, the questions are over. Uh, Erin and Kyle, I want to thank you so much for joining us. For the rest, uh, the uh, lecture, the webinar will uh, is recorded and will be uploaded uh, uh, online. So you are welcome to review it again. And, uh, and we will share the presentation with, uh, with you as well. So thank you everyone for uh, joining. Uh, I hope you have uh, a great uh, evening and uh, hope to see some uh, uh, application come from Israel as well. Bye everyone. Thank you so much. Bye, thank you.